takes place in this jungle community in the Putumayo, which um, is a zone of, uh, was then, it probably still is, very conflictive zone, center of uh, coke, you know, the coke industry in Colombia, guerrilla there, paramilitaries, everything you can imagine. The frontiers where ayahuasca takes place in the indigenous, you know, indigenous rituals are very troubled places. Politics enters into it. I mean, I was, I can't go back to this community. I was threatened by the guerrilla. The indigenous people here, less than 1% of the population, they're the community that has been most hit by the violence in Colombia. You know, the displaced, massacred, all this. I mean, uh, there's some horrible stories. Indigenous cultures are on the way out all over the world, all over the world. I mean, they have to adapt. And part of that, if ayahuasca has survived, has to adapt. It's definitely gone far beyond its original cultural context. They said in their visions, they have had this mission that it's, if it's a medicine, if it's for the spiritual benefit of people, it shouldn't be restricted to one race or one community. They have a mission to spread it to the world and to help everyone because we're all human beings, we're all suffering human beings. So another purpose is they want to find allies in the white world who can help them defend their culture and their medicine. I'm not against the dissemination of yay. Hey, it's happening anyway. It's a question of guiding it in the right channels and you know, hopefully conserving the kind of the eternal virtues of it. Then he drinks another cup and another. He breaks the world record for a beginner. When he finds himself being transformed into a primate, he is strangely comfortable with it, as if he were returning to his true personality. There's a kind of, you know, there's kind of witch hunt against any kind of uh, form of thinking outside of the system or questioning the system. Now, I would say ayahuasca is just an example of what is happening on every level nowadays. I think. It's at the very heart of uh, kind of important changes in, this doesn't sound pretentious, the world historical spirit. The world is changing. The world is changing. We're going through some major convulsions. And ayahuasca is both a symbol of it, it's a mirror of it, it's a way of getting right to the heart and understanding that behind the material there is something else. I'm not a religious person, I'm not a true believer, but I think one of the values that all the people who believe in ayahuasca share is that there is something beyond the material world. There is some kind of spiritual, ethereal element, and that if we fail to respect that, we're not going to be happy and uh, you know, we're not going to, might not even survive. There are a lot of dangers. There's a danger on one side of a regulation, interference from the authorities. On the other side, there's a danger of cultural erosion. Who knows what's going to happen? The fumigation, uh, you know, to get rid of the coca plants, they're also killing a lot of ayahuasca plants. That's another thing. The environmental situation of the jungles, because at the heart, the first thing, without the plants, you can't have ayahuasca. That, in a way, is why it's good that new people, new kinds of people are coming in and working with it. A few blazing seconds of ecstasy that is suddenly pulled away like a taunting cloak as the spirit fades into the void of Hota's exhaustion. Leaving him so embarrassed with himself, he wants to hide in the deepest hole. Every novelist chooses his particular angle on it. This happens to be my angle on it. But the, as I said, it stands and falls uh, on the way it explores um, you know, human problems, human frailties, and all that. And uh, not because, and you know, I've been lucky enough to get on a, a subject that for the rest of the world sounds pretty exotic.